Good morning, all. Thank you for joining us today on a Saturday morning. Thousand and beyond with uh, Solitaire. Uh, in 2019, when we started off uh, Solitaire, uh, we had an idea that we would go big because we were uh, addressing the requirements of a wide set of investors, and uh, it was important that we got in a product which was sustainable. It creates wealth over a period of time, and not just a one-hit wonder kind of a thing. So when we ideated Solitaire, what we thought was let's give a product that is appealing to a wide set of investors and not just a specific pointed set of investors, because that's that was our dream, right? And today, or rather, April has been one of the months where uh, one of our dreams, our initial dreams, have come true. We've crossed thousand crores, and before we start the presentation today. we would like to thank all our investors and all our well wishers and all our all people who follow solitaire and everyone who's worked to bring this big number into the big number alive right see 1000 crores is a huge sum of money and it's a culmination of the entire amount of trust uh, confidence of all our investors and all our stakeholders put together so a big round of applause to the solitaire team before we start off Thousand and beyond, right? Uh, when we say celebrating four years, it's actually not four years because we are going to close at five years by the end of August. But since uh, it's not yet five years, we are we're still celebrating four years. So it's just a good amount of uh, or a good number of uh, months to go before we uh, go ahead and celebrate the five years as well. So go moving on to the first slide. How our AUM has um, developed over a period of time? If you see, we started off small, obviously as would uh, and we didn't want to go the distributor route and still we haven't gone through the distributor route where the easiest route would be to distribute through a bank or a set of investors or a set of uh, influencers and then get your aum up but we have never been into the aum game we wanted our investors to understand what they were getting into because the product that we ideated was not meant for a person who is looking for the short term or looking to get uh, take advantage of momentum it was for a person who is serious about creating wealth over a long term and this chart very very clearly depicts that and how we've built our aum over a period of 4 4 and a half years is a testament or rather it's all due to our investors who always uh, kept their confidence in us and ensured that they gave us timely opportunities to participate because when the market opportunities come right it's more often uh, Uh, another uh, excuse for investors to say let's wait and let's uh, go slow but our investors have always entrusted us with their initial or additional contributions and that's what has made today's number what it is the initial years uh, so when we started off right we started off in 30th august uh, 2019 and as you would all know covid happened within the next 6 7 months so when markets are like when people or where in, where investors are saying you know there's no way that we go back to normalcy from here when there is extreme pessimism on the road right that was our initial period when we started off so it was pretty hard for us but there were a good number of investors who entrusted us with additional capital at that point of time and they are they are uh, seeing the fruits of it right now now i would want you to consider two portfolios portfolio a which has a one year return of 79% and portfolio b which has a one year performance of 58% so today let's say you presented with two different portfolios that have performed this much in the last one year which one would you pick see any rational person would go ahead with portfolio a because that has demonstrated a history of performing bigger and much bigger right 79 over 58% is around 21%. That's a huge return. That's a huge outperformance. So it's obvious that everyone would go with portfolio A. But let's look at what happened. Portfolio A, four year performance. If you see the first year extremely well, 79%, year 2 21%, year 3 there's a dip of 3% and year 4 there's still 40%. this is still very good performance right uh, if you look at it even at a four year period this is a very good performance but let's look at portfolio b this looks somewhat if you'll start with right if you start with year 1 and judge the performance of the portfolio at year 1 and stop 
where would you have been at that point of at the end of year four is what you're going to take a look at. See, we usually keep the performance at the last slide so that we uh, so that we ended up with that. So, but I would want to put the performance right in front of you in the first slide itself because this is what has happened. If you look at Solitaire, it has become Solitaire as portfolio B and S and P B S E five hundred T R I as portfolio A. Why we say that is a portfolio's one year performance when there is a huge uh, let's say out performance in the market. A one year performance is no indicator of a portfolio's. uh long term performance how a portfolio manages to create sustainable wealth for you over a period of 3 to 5 years is what is important because this one year could be anybody's one year i could come and you could come and but we don't know which one year is going to give you that performance but which is a portfolio which can deliver outstanding performance or sustainable outstanding performance over a period of 3 to 5 years is what we investors are looking for or typically the investors who have traveled with us always look at returns always look at performance and how to create wealth over a period of 3 to 5 years because something that is there on paper for one year may not stay for the next year and our point is not to just get um, excited by looking at one year numbers but creating wealth over a period of 3 to 5 years is what all all of us want despite uh, the kick that we get from seeing a huge outperformance in a one year on one year numbers right even with solitaire we would expect or rather we would say don't look at our one year numbers don't look at our two year numbers also look at our performance and judge our performance from a 3 plus year perspective and the numbers are there for you to see now moving on to how this was possible right see generally it's very easy to say okay from hindsight okay this performance is better that performance is better so i would go with the performance uh, uh, over a period of 3 years if this uh, fund has performed well okay that's an evidence that's fine but then what led to this performance is what matters a lot and any product in the equity segment must be judged from that perspective so our kitchen which is our investment framework right which is what i would want to take you through in the next few slides so that you understand what we put into our kitchen to come out with such a beautiful product so usually uh, the question is what ideas you guys are buying right it's usually what do you buy how many stocks do you hold will the stock be a multi bagger all that right all that is important definitely your idea generation is very very important but most of us do not fail to i mean most of us fail to see beyond the first point which is idea generation there is something called execution execution means see today we ideate an idea we believe that this stock or this company or this uh, specific uh, organization or this specific uh, team is good to run for the next 3 to 5 years but then when we execute and get into the team is going to be very 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 critical because your execution is going to depend or rather your entry point or your entry level valuations are going to be very very important before you generate wealth out of an idea right so when we generate an idea we take a good amount of time when we execute we take a good amount of time and the third thing the most important thing when we maintain an idea this is where the magic happens where we generate we execute but we also have to maintain so a lot of investors ask us right your portfolio is pretty much the same for the last 2 3 years it's a very boring portfolio there's not a lot of churn you don't bring in new stocks but what they fail to see is that that single portfolio what has been developed initially for them has been running 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 because you're supposed to hold on to your winners and see this is where the magic happens but the point is we always say that activity is not equal to productivity so let's say we hold the same stocks in your portfolio it doesn't mean that we don't maintain it because there's a lot of lot of activity that goes on the back end to ensure that the specific thesis or the specific idea can still be held in your portfolio until we reach a maturity stage where the idea becomes overvalued and then we take a sell call right so when we hold on to a stock we believe that the stock is still has a lot of steam it's still undervalued or is still fairly valued because market usually oscillates between overvalued and undervalued and it's hardly fairly valued at least in a market like india right when we say that overvaluation needs to come when we when we wait for overvaluation to come that's when we take a sell call right so our idea maintenance is one of the most critical aspects which most of us are very very uh, we concentrate only on the first point which is idea generation which is of course very important but your execution and idea maintenance is something that you could go and ask any analyst any portfolio manager our 
they take up around 75% of the time where idea generation is hardly 25 to 30% and this is ideally where the magic happens how is this idea generation come into the picture how does this come into the picture so when an analyst typically looks at a portfolio or when an analyst looks at a specific stock right how does he come up to it how does the idea get generated so there are multiple the above uh, top or uh, the above uh, things are not exclusive they are just a very very small part of what our research analysts go through but these are the basic things that one needs to go through before the idea comes into your portfolio right so there are multiple things like exchange filings annual reports con calls sell side reports the networking that you do with your peers and the agm proceedings everything culminates into a specific idea right so what happens is uh, any exchange filing right let me take the example of exchange filings in uh, case of uh, one of the biggest companies in india let's say tata consultancy services right they release around uh, 360 to 400 press releases every year right on bse but what you need to see is out of these 360 to 400 how many of these press releases are relevant to your investment decision making right probably 10 to 12 right that will tell you if this is a good company to invest in or not uh, for a company like tcs but let's say out of this 360 if you have to know which 10 to 12 is relevant to your investment decision making you will have to go through the entire 360 to 400 press releases so that's the kind of work that they do that's the kind of work that our research team does and what you see on paper or what you see on the portfolio is just a very very small or rather it's a small result in terms of number but then the work that has gone into it is <laughs> it's very heavy and before we put our investors money into it we do a lot of due diligence and this is what typically happens right your research analyst it, he completes the investment thesis between 30 to 45 days this is just a general number there has been case where we worked on an idea for more than one year and because we didn't get enough conviction in that specific idea we waited for the uh, specific event to happen and then moved on to putting it into our investment pipeline and once it comes into the investment pipeline also it doesn't get approved and then come into your portfolio immediately right it is once the last point right if you have to look at the last point very closely you see that once the idea is ready for execution that's the time when the stock enters the solid type portfolio so now what does this mean right i can have the best companies in india i can have the best run companies the quality managements and uh, ma- management running the company and all these companies could be there for the taking but if i don't get into that best company at the right time at the right valuation we are not going to be making money as investors because we have seen time and again even the best companies if you get into them at the wrong point of time you go through a long period of time correction and what is time correction it's in another form of losing money to inflation right so we do not want to get into stocks at insane valuations before uh, i mean we would have done the research right we would have had the pipeline ready but then if the stock doesn't come to our uh, value, uh, come to our valuation that it is favorable to us we don't take a call to enter that is how strict we are with these stocks entering into your portfolio but then there's a lot of work that goes behind the screen before that stock enters into the pipeline itself so it's i so it's going to be thesis presentation to the head of fund manager and uh, head of research and going into the universe and finally execution happens only when the price is right the execution process this is something that uh, we would want all our investors and people who are looking to invest in solitaire to know because uh, when there are questions right uh, when they say uh, there's only so much uh, there's still so much to uh, invest in uh, your fund why are uh, why aren't you doing a lot of activity because most of us confuse activity with productivity like i said but we tell them very very clearly because there's a set process so today the performance that solita has delivered and the um, range that has got uh, to uh, address a lot of investors concerns it's not because i mean it's one one great uh, uh, element is definitely the research and the fund management team everything but a huge amount of effort is taken uh, due to or rather huge amount of performance is delivered due to our very very stringent process right with the stock valuation range once it is captured let's say we want to buy a stock between this range and that range once it is captured the review of the stock price movement is monitored regularly 
not for getting into it uh, to get into a or rather to take advantage of the momentum or anything but it's this review of stock price movement is monitored regularly to get a proper entry point because we would have set an entry point to a specific stock and if that entry point comes only then we execute so there are two levels which is positive and negative these are two triggers right there is a specific data analyst who monitors this market levels and this message from the data analyst is sent to the investment committee after which the execution happens right so it's not random and this happens on a client level basis which is where which is our usp right so today a client can have one stock which because of his early entry or late entry into our portfolio uh would have i would have uh, enabled him enabled us to buy that specific stock for him because that stock was available at a specific valuation at that point of time but then tomorrow let's say an investor comes we can't give the same stock to him when the stock price has gone up significantly because our experience to different investors will not be homogeneous because the stocks will be the same the stock uh, portfolio can be homogeneous but the experience may not be because their entry points are totally different so to avoid all this we've created a process of execution at the right time i mean execution wherein we say that the execution happens only when the stock price hits the trigger right when the message is generated to the investment committee and only after the approval has come on a client level we decide that we are going to buy or we are going to sell and then we execute right so there's a huge process before during and after as well the execution before is the idea generation during is the execution after is the idea maintenance so these three have to come into place for you to ideally generate the returns that you've seen right now now what made us stay the course see for a lot of us uh, the motivation right is our uh, is how much uh, wealth can we create sustainably for a, a lot of our clients right so it's on, not only the returns that we try to generate and give our clients it's also the behavior that we try to inculcate right so over a period of the over a, over the next few slides we're going to focus on what we've done since the beginning since our inception to our clients how we've added value at the stock level at the client level and the fund level so that you understand that it's uh, understand the aspects that we cover and obviously as always if uh, the client is at the stop for us because our model itself focuses on a client level value enhancement whereas uh, where we deploy our uh, deploy our funds on a client le- client basis only that is our usp is that when we start off today you're going to be curating a portfolio at the client level so this has led to our 100% achievement of 60 clients who've crossed 3 plus years today who on, on uh, who outperformed the benchmark by at least 4%. So this is the smallest number which is the smallest outperformance number. There have been clients there have been portfolios which have outperformed the index over a period of 3 and a half or rather 4 and a half years over a period of 4 and a half years if you see uh, the outperformance is more than 4% or 5% or even 10% the compounding that it generates or the money that it generates or the outperformance that it generates over a period of 4 and a half years is immense. especially when the average benchmark performance ranges between 20 to 25% which itself is a huge number so this we are uh, we are very very happy about and we would want to put it out that this is something that we consider the biggest achievement because what a client requires is a sustainable performance over a period of time and not just a one hit wonder and this is something that we've enhanced this is this is something that we believe that we've enhanced at the client level and not just the fund level how do we do it at a stock level is very interesting right so what comes into picture or what has led to this kind of a performance is uh, it's not it's not a straight road not all stocks behave the same way and market doesn't go up while or rather uh, mark, uh, parts of the market don't go up together and parts of the market don't come down together it's just that specific parts move up and specific mar- parts move down and we will have to ensure that we are on the right parts at the right time right so if you look at these four quadrants they're very different right the way you address these ideas is very different and the way you react to these ideas is very different so you'll have to be dynamic in your approach of execution and entry points or exit so that you give a portfolio which is not so this is where we talk about right this is where we say productivity is not equal to activity but then we need to be active 
with the fourth quadrant where there is a non performer so if you go to each quadrant like the first it company which is an all star we bought the company in 2022 august so it's going to be close to 2 years since we bought it and it's been it's up by uh, 150% which is 2.5x uh, since our initial buy so this is an all star this rarely happens right when we start off with a company i mean though it has happened uh, in the last couple of years for a lot of stocks uh because market levels are such so i mean today where valuations are right so where uh, we see the first quadrant is this it company which was an all star where the fundamentals was up from day one and the stock price was also accordingly reacting to it from day one and it has been an all star like the name suggests right if you look at the second quadrant the industrial consumables company which is a prime is a very very clear example of our patience being rewarded we first bought the stock in 2019 right between 2019 and 2022 the stock went nowhere though the fundamentals were really good so we didn't have our focus on the stock price we had it on the fundamentals which was consistent which was in line with what the management was saying and then on, only then it uh, because that is the only thing that kept us holding on to that stock but what happened in the next two years between 2022 and 2024 is that stock went up by 240% that is 3.4x right which ideally translates to a 31% cagr over a period of 4.5 years so if you look at the difference between the first quadrant and the second quadrant this is very stark right you see fundamentals going up in both companies but one company's stock price goes up and the other company's stock price stays flat for a period of 3 years so how would you decide like it, it is not straight right you don't if you see fundamentals going up then the stock price should go up that's what a usual investor would tell you but then it's your conviction that makes you stay within a company even when the stock price doesn't go up because you know you're eventually going to make your money when the tide turns towards you so that's what has happened and the patience was aptly rewarded if you look at the third quarter it's the current underdog see usually it's the third quarter which moves on to the first quarter i mean the second quarter that usually happens right this is something that we are today also very very confident about our first buy in this company was August 2000 in August 2021 it's a current underdog it's in through the general insurance space where the fundamentals have been up but the stock price has been flat for a variety of reasons since our initial buy but then we still hold on to the conviction and our expectation is for this third quarter to become the first quarter and what we saw within the second quarter can very well happen uh in this company in the future which is what is helping us hold on to this kind of companies as well so if you look at the fourth quadrant now this is a company where our initial thesis was one thing and where uh, the management again and again uh, 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 when we went on with a specific conviction right the management always had something uh, which is opposite to it and opposite to the thesis that was expected out of or opposite to what was expected out of the uh, company the management wasn't very clear about what it was doing uh, its intentions so even if the stock price was up since the time we bought for a period of 1.7 years we held the stock and since the stock price went up by 25% the fundamentals were still down and we still sold the stock in september 2023 why because it was though it was an outperformer or rather it was a performer not a, an average performer in stock price the fundamentals in terms of fundamentals it was still a non performer which is why we sold that stock so these four quadrants will tell you the kind of ideas that we that goes into your sor- goes into your solitaire portfolio and the type of reactions or the type of uh, actions that you get from portfolio managers perspective because not everything can have the same action so if something goes up or other if the fundamentals are good the stock price doesn't obviously go up if the fundamentals are good the stock price the, i mean fundamentals are bad the stock price obviously doesn't come down immediately so how do you react to all this you will have to have a very very strong uh sense of what is happening within a company by which is what is our uh usp or which is what is our uh, secret sauce right what we do is we ensure that a company's idea maintenance or the idea's maintenance is given a lot of emphasis and when this idea maintenance is given a lot of emphasis what you en- eventually do is you avoid mistakes like the one in the fourth quarter so what we typically tend to do is we avoid mistakes so that we are left with what uh end up being winners right sometimes they can be winners immediately sometimes they can be winners like what you see in the second quarter and sometimes they can still be winners and still not perform but what we do is we ensure that we always stick to winners by eliminating the losers that's how our all our portfolios or the entire universe 
of our entire philosophy of thought runs. If you look at our bottom-up approach in action, which is another company that we would want to show, and uh, it's a household FMCG company, and if you see our initial buying action right between May and June, we started buying three percent, and then reduced our initial buying position to two percent. After it moved up by twenty-five percent, and after it moved up further, we stopped buying around June to July, and we sold partially as well between Jan to Feb because the valuations were. Uh, Kind of excessive for a company of this uh, quality, and that's when we decided that see, when you run an active fund, you have to make decisions which are uh, in the interest of the investors, and that had worked out pretty well as well. What this chart tells you is that our buying and our our selling is it's not very random, or it's not at the fund level, and it's at the client level. See, because in this case, if you see our initial buying position at three percent for an investor who got into solitaire between May and June. Could have gotten three percent of that portfolio's. Uh, I mean, we could have we could have bought three percent of that specific stock into their portfolio. But for a person who joined us between October to November or October to December, right at that point of time, we probably initial we could buy only two to two point five percent. And as you can see from the chart, the stock never gave us time to add more to that. a uh, specific position also because it was pretty much flat for some time and then it kept going up so what this tells you is very clearly we don't want to bu keep buying stocks just for the sake of it because our uh, dependence on an initial idea our dependence on portfolio creation is not restricted to just a few ideas because uh, we believe that we can still keep generating ideas but when the market is going through a very uh, uh, a phase of overvaluation we need to step back and ask Is it the right time to deploy? Because the opportunities opportunities in the market today are very very few, which we will be concentrating on what we are doing currently in the next few slides. So you can see from this slide that it's not just a buying and holding and then selling later. It's going to review. It's going to be reviewing your positions whenever the stock price moves up or moves down, and then reacting to it accordingly. And the value enhancement at the fund level, uh, we're very happy to show you that. Uh, from this is the apmi data the regulators uh, data which shows that we have ended up in the top quartile uh, within uh, across a uh, invest so let's say if you take 3 years into consideration across uh, 640 investment advisors we've uh, ended up in the top quartile and uh, it's a happy moment for us and uh, it's a happy moment for all our investors it's uh, definitely once again possible only because of you guys so what you can see from here is that we always consider client first and uh, then the stock i mean client and stock is first and then fund level is only a consequence of the performance that we try to deliver within the stock and the client so fund level is nothing but a culmination of all our investors put together and their portfolios put together and their overall performance averaged out so this fund level performance is just as a result of individual client level portfolios performing well then solitaire then versus now So let's look at Nifty 50 today, right? Where is Nifty 50? Obviously, the last time we uh, spoke about uh, solitaire in a webinar, also the Nifty was at its high. Uh, today, also it is at a high. We would want to see. We just wanted to see how we reacted, right? Because looking back and seeing what uh, what did we do, if we did any mistakes in the past, and if we did any mistakes, how to correct all that. We we keep doing that on a regular basis, right? Just a look back on what we did during the specific highs of each year, right? Let's say. 18th October 2021 and a 1st December 2022 and 12th April 2024. What we are doing right now. So let's look at what we did in 21 and 22. If you look at deployment at market highs in 2021 and 2022, it was still the respective uh, high that Nifty made during that year at uh, in 2021 and 2022. But if you look at our deployment at that point of time, it was way higher than what it is today. So this shows that it is very clearly not. Index specific, but it is very sp stock specific, right? See, in 2021 and 22, there were still ideas. Though the Nifty was at its uh, respective highs in the respective years, we were still being, uh, we were still able to find ideas which were undervalued at that point of time, which is why a 58% deployment was possible. But today, if you look at the number of stocks that uh, that we are able to find value in, right? There are very few, right? So, but the thing is. value valuation is a matter of demand and supply right when uh, when stock ideas are presented when stock ideas are uh, ideated within the universe 
they keep getting into the universe just for the merit of the idea the valuation comes at last so today even if you are deploying only 21% on day 1 or the first week what we have is a set of ideas or the pipeline of ideas is so robust that tomorrow let's say there is a correction we are ready with the cash or we are ready with the dry powder that can be deployed at that point of time so whenever uh, investors who have joined us recently ask us you're holding only cash but the markets are going up uh, recently we tell them uh, one simple thing which if you look back uh, on our earlier slides right year 1 58% versus 79% which did better over a period of 3 3 and a half years please tell them only one thing we tell them that see today if you can see that the market has gone up so much all this can exist only on paper today and go away within a few days or within a few weeks because usually markets do not give a lot of time after uh, they've gone up significantly right before we know it you will be looking at a specific uh, uh, a specific stock correcting that you never expected to correct so at that point of time uh, you will not have anything to back your thesis on so when we ideate an idea we specify a specific range so let's say we want to buy an idea between 100 and 120 if it's a 220 we we straight way don't don't buy right but let's say you got into an idea at 200 and it went up to 250 300 you have uh, no basis on what you can hold the stock at 200 because it was overvalued even at 200 right so what if it comes down from 200 back to 100 so what would you hold on to we hold on to the existing we hold on to our research when when the research says when our research says that 200 is not the right price to hold at hold it at or even buy it at and 100 or 100 to 150 is the right price for you to buy it at so when we have such a backing we wait for that 100 to 150 to come to us and then we buy and that's when we get the confidence that you may not get that when you invested into a stock at 200 when you saw it go up to 300 and when it comes back to 100 or 150 you should be buying right but we have the confidence because we have done the work already so this 21% that we've invested today is a result of valuations which is a result of demand and supply which is not going to be sustainable for a long period of time and when the correction or when the opportunity is come that's when we will take a very aggressive approach and that's when you will see a lot of deployment on your portfolio so all you need to do is wait wait for the market to give you the opportunity and not pounce on it uh, because momentum is always a dangerous game right when you when the tide turns or you will not be you wouldn't know what hit you right so we'll just have to wait and ensure that we get into the right idea at the right time and performance of solid air portfolio started at market highs so today the question is typically that right i'm starting at a market high so one question is why don't you deploy a good amount of money today and the other question is if i give you money today is that the market high will it perform well or rather will it be able to uh, get good returns and this is something that we wanted to show that for a couple of clients who uh, started their portfolios at the previous market highs in 2021 and 2022 and how their two year and since inception performance or, or the respect to one year and since inception performance has been and uh, the outperformance is definitely something which is very commendable but this has been possible only because of our process of holding on to cash whenever we have to hold on to cash because if we had invested let's say if we had gone gung ho about the market at that point of time when the market were at its highs and tried to take part of the momentum we wouldn't have been able to outperform or show this kind of outperformance uh, because 28% or 24% outperformance is a huge number right since inception number or even 17% 15% outperformance is a huge number over a period of 2 years or 2 years plus so when you want to get that kind of an uh, outlier investment experience right you will have to wait until the opportunity presents itself before you and not jump in jump into it uh, and create a subpar experience for yourself will timing the market work now moving on to how so we say that don't time the market and all that but as uh, but we also say that we hold on to cash and then deploy only when the opportunities come now the difference between timing the market and waiting for opportunities when the uh, i mean waiting for opportunities with the cash is what i would want to show you in the next couple of slides so when when people generally ask right will timing the market work we would always want to put this slide out in our uh, presentations where we say this is india's unluckiest investor right this investor has invested 30 lakhs that is 1 lakh uh, per year over a period of 30 years 
since 1992 to 2023. So this 30 lakhs invested over a period of 30 years has compounded and given her 2.5 crores. Now the interesting part is this 1 lakh was invested at each year at the respective high, high of Sensex, right? So when even with an investor who is invested at the respective high of Sensex at the respective year, they are able to generate a 30-year average CAGR of 12%, right? Which is a significant number, which is a very, very good number. And this is what markets have been de de delivering over a period of 30 years. This is the number that we need to keep in mind. So even if you invest at the market high, at the at the market high and in the most overvalued stocks at that point of time, uh, even if you invest 1 lakh every year, right, your portfolio compounding is going to be huge and the amount that you're going to end up with is huge. Now, we've talked about investing even when the market is high. So where does the edge lie, right? Now we say that we hold on to cash when the markets are not giving us opportunities. But we also say that in don't be... Uh, on the sidelines, start investing. So where do you find the edge of doing or investing at the right time? If you look at timing the market versus buying, right, this is the edge, right? If you look at a specific stock like Walmart, which is which is done 1,400 times, uh, which is created 1,400 times uh, the, uh, the money for investors who invested in it from 1973 to... Uh, uh, to uh, around 2000, right, 1999, 1973 to 2000. So which is around 27 years. So if you look at it, the performance has been immense during that period of time. But if you look at the period from 2000 to 2022 to 23, right, around 23 years, the car, the stock has appreciated, appreciated hardly by 2x. Now, uh, make no mistake, the fundamentals have been really, I mean, they've been decent as well from 2000 to 2023. The financials have been growing well, the uh, the sales have been growing well, the profits have been growing well, and the ROC has been good for a period of 23 years. But why did the stock not perform at all for a period of 23 years is very simple. Because a person who got into Walmart in 2000, after looking at its performance for the last 27 years, assumed that the next 27 years will also be as weak. But usually markets or equity markets are not that linear, right? Because when the investor got into it at 2000, he was getting into Walmart at a very, very high valuation. So this is where the edge lies, right? So today, even if you invest in the index, even if you invest uh, across a period, of, across a set of stocks on a yearly basis and make that 10 to 12% return, that is one part of it. But how can you get a much a uh, better experience is by buying right into specific stocks but as uh, as are uh, as the general investors let's say uh, you are an investor into solitaire or you are looking at solitaire your bread and butter would be something else and not investing into specific stocks so which is why you need a person to look at specific ideas and invest at the right time so when you are looking at a specific idea buying right is very important so this is where you need to ask the question, this additional contribution that we keep talking about, right? Even in, let's say in 2021 and 2022, the market is volatile and high was the answer from a lot of our investors. Is it the right time to invest? But we were able to find the right kind of ideas at that point of time. So the question that time the investor should have asked is what return can I get by providing additional capital or and not is it the right time to invest? Because when you find the right time to invest, it's going to be stock specific and not index specific that we saw in the couple of slides previous to this. So when we say even the unluckiest investor in India who's done it over a period of time in the index has done 12%, how can you get an edge by doing stock specific investing? By It's by looking at uh, your entry valuations very, very carefully. And that's what has led to our outperformance over the benchmark or since our inception. And this is again a value addition in action of a capital goods company where we were able to buy. This is between 2021 and 22 when we started buying the stock in uh, close to November 2021. And Jan 22, Jan, uh, Feb 22, the stock dipped close to 1,100. And then that was the correction that we were, uh, we didn't expect it at that point of time. But then when the correction was there, we what we did was we uh, called up all our, in, all our investors ask them for uh, additional contribution, ask them, ask them to act now. And when they trusted us and added more at that point of time, we could buy more for them. And the results are there for you to see. So this is what we do typically, right? Whenever there is a requirement to add more money, we come 
very aggressively and then ask you for money at that point of time you would just have to understand that this is what we do because it's not the performance that talks to you and says that you'll have to invest with us it's our i it's our process it's our uh, the way we look at stocks and the way we buy and the way we dis- way we discipline your portfolio according in accordance with our valuation metrics and that's what is going to tell you if this product is a product that you would invest in and create wealth over a period of time and this is something for you to see which which is there which, this is the evidence right in the last 3 years last uh, uh, what we have done with a specific stock and there are multiple examples like these where we have uh, we've had very very pointed buying when there was a correction and our investors they would uh, they would know what kind of experience they've gotten over a period of 3 years after one specific decision that has been made 3 years before that now coming back to our uh, i mean coming to our philosophy uh, like we always say our great investment is strong fundamentals plus attractive valuations right so how do we how does this research culminate into uh, a product uh, a specific idea it has to come up so we look for companies which have a good corporate governance which is the first and foremost point where uh, because you can put a lot of things into paper Quali- quantitative things can be put into paper and said that uh, you know this company will do well this company will do this kind of a profit this kind of uh, this kind of growth will can be expected from this company for the next 3 to 5 years but then if the management is dubious uh, what happens is all this can go uh, null right so what we put at the forefront is a good corporate governance structure after which we go on to execution industry leadership high growth ratios low leverage and finally the most important one that we have spoken about in the last few slides is reasonable valuations so once 1 2 3 4 and 5 are ticked off it's the number 6 which is more important to is the most important to us because you can definitely have the best company in india but if you don't invest into that best company in india at the right price you're not going to be making money that we are very very clear about as you can see in the evidence in the last few slides that is what uh, that is what we ensure so that our investors experience is uh, i mean our investors experience is outlier is that the outlier uh, experience right that's what we want to give we do not want to give or follow the momentum of the markets and give them a subpar experience and that's what we've done and we are really proud of it as well and long term investment success is definitely these two right what you need to do is focus on your winners and focus on selling your losers based on fundamentals you would have seen the quadrant which showed what are the winners that you the four quadrants that you saw what are the winners that you need to ride on and what are the sellers that you need, i mean what are the losers that you need to sell out of so this these two are the salient points that we need to keep in mind while creating long term wealth for ourselves and some portfolio quants for your uh, uh, viewing this is again uh, something that we keep telling our clients because our solid app portfolio it's a portfolio which has uh, very low leverage the companies that we hold in a solid app portfolio almost have little to no debt because when you have a uh, high inflation uh, inflationary environment when the expectation on rates is go is that it will go up and uh, when uh, self sustainability is the best thing to go forward i mean uh, self sustainable companies are the ones that you need to stay invested in we stick to companies which have a lot of cash in their books and not a lot of external borrowings because these companies are self sustainable and they do, not, they do not depend on external borrowings or external help for their further growth which has typically worked out for us because usually uh, the misconception in the market is that you take high risk and you make high returns but we always say you take a lower risk than what the market takes and buy it cheaper than what the market believes that it should be given and then you make you have a huge margin of safety and that's when you make outlier returns for your clients and it's a very balanced sector composition that you can see from uh, today's portfolio of course this is a uh, some of all portfolios put together across different client portfolios so a client might be a specific so this is uh, something that has been curated with uh, curated over a period of time so let's say today we are at 2% uh, in entertainment <coughs> as of 31st march 2024 at the scheme level but we probably would be higher uh, the next month or 6 months later once more investors come into the picture depending on each company's valuation so it is going to be a sector agnostic portfolio but then these 
uh, sector agnostic portfolio plus and it is going to be a, ball, a bottom up approach as well but you will always going to be finding a balance in your portfolio and it is not going to be skewed towards a specific idea because that's what we believe right when we say diversification it uh, doesn't mean that uh, we uh, we have one uh, idea and the or rather we are not confident about a specific idea and we not do not go gung about it but the intention of solitaire is to give you a balanced approach where if you are able to find uh, 20 to 30 ideas and have the same kind of confidence over 20 to 30 ideas diversification works really well because you are reducing your risk as well as uh, enhancing your potential returns because the margin of safety that you give for any stock that you want to buy in your portfolio is huge that's what we believe in and uh, some solid tech quants uh, this is the aum as on 31st of march 2024 we uh it was uh, around 6th or 7th of april that we crossed 1000 crores and uh, these are some numbers that you would want to that you can take a look at so today the market cap classification that you see is again the sum total of all investors portfolios put together this 30% or 14% and 50% in small cap 14% uh, in mid cap and 30% in large cap is the sum of all portfolios put together but then today's portfolio allocation can be very different for a new investor who joins us today because valuations are going to be Uh, or rather your portfolio creation is going to be as dynamic as possible according to today's market context and how your portfolio will look like in a few years there will definitely be a few big winners like you saw in the first quarter this it company there will be optimum performers which can turn out to be few big winners after a, a period of time so this is what has happened right in the first two quarters if you see the few big winners came up immediately within 1 to 1.5 years they appreciated by 2x 3x or 4x also and they gave you stupendous returns but there are a lot of companies which can take good amount of time let's say 3 or 4 years but then they can give you all the returns that you expected or rather that you saw with a few big winners which you saw in the first year which can potentially add a lot of alpha to your portfolio there and then you have obviously the few losers when fundamentals deteriorate you'll have to have a strong vigil on these companies ensure that they are working out according to the thesis that you had initially put and if they don't if they consistently uh, dismiss your thesis or consistently go against what you expected them to do then you'll have to take a call to sell solitaire's current positioning is very clear we are into the financialization story we would want this uh, we put this picture out every, in every solitaire presentation where uh, the, the digitalization and the financialization story is working out really well because you can see gods taking money through upi so that's uh, something that is very indicative of where india is today and uh, if you want to stay within india and invest within india you'll have to find out champions or rather players who are efficient today who are on their road to becoming world champions that's what solitaire focuses on and of course make in india as you would all know it's uh, growing leaps and bounds so these this is the current positioning of solitaire when we position solitaire's portfolio today it is important that our robust our pipeline is robust but then again as we have been speaking about in the last uh, many slides valuations are very very important and our risk positioning is very moderate when we say risk it's about the potential so risk is again it's not volatility because we consider volatility as opportunity and then we take advantage of it when we say risk when we take a moderate risk it's about the potential certainty or rather the uncertainty that you would make your money back or rather your capital would be given back so if there is a very uncertain idea we do not get into companies which have high debt which do not come get into companies which are uh, which have a dubious management and our initial uh, uh, deployment or rather our total deployment in a specific stock is between 3 to 5% so management quality is ticked off our debt or uh, balance sheet is ticked off and your uh, allocation is ticked off and finally your valuation is also ticked off all this makes solitaire a very low risk to moderate risk portfolio where we ensure that the margin of safety is very very high before we invest in which is why we want to go against the market when they say uh, high risk makes high returns because low risk and moderate risk has made very good returns as you can see from our performance and the return expectation is as always between 700 to 900 bips over the average inflation and to conclude uh, we have a good economy right now things are stabilizing and uh, obviously we will have to go through a few bumps in the next uh, few years uh, next 10 to 15 years definitely if we definitely we all know that the economy is going to turn out to be good but then 
we should also understand that we are going to go through some bumps some blips and we'll have to be ready and hold on to our confidence in the long term india story to ensure that we make the most out of corporate india because their long term growth prospects are still intact all we need to do is believe trust in what uh, india as i mean it doesn't matter which political inclination that you are towards because india democratically or rather the demographics of india is that uh, it will tend to do well over a period of time because of the young workforce and the population that is geared up to take india to a different height and as always you will have to be careful where you invest in because it is today's valuations are very uh, and fair or attractive only in selective pockets attractive too is a little bit of excessive it's more fair in select pockets that you so you'll have to be very very careful where you put in your money today especially because markets can turn around in a second right you can never you'll never know what hit you at that point of time because all that you've seen on paper can be reversed in a specific one to two weeks so you'll have to be ensure so what happens with these kind of uh, markets is that when uh, quality and non quality go up together you, you won't know the difference between quality and non quality because uh, both let's say quality and non quality fall quality doesn't fall as much but quality will recover pretty quickly when the fundamentals are there for it to be i mean when the fundamentals are uh, there for it to back right so uh, specific stock can have its own fundamentals to back its price but then a non quality stock if you do not know the difference between quality and non quality then it's going to be a problem a non quality stock may never recover so you'll have to be very careful where you put your money today and uh, as we saw before our performance numbers uh, since inception we've done well over a period of 4 uh, 4 and a half years we want to reach 5 years this august and uh, once again thanks to all our investors who bestowed their trust on us and uh, it's been a wonderful journey and uh, sustainability is the key in this case and wealth creation over a period of time uh, this is just the first step for us as we would know as well and uh, we would want all our investors to take part in this journey with us uh, while we uh, because it's a wonderful thing to make money for yourself and make money for the clients right it's a win win situation so in th- those kind of cases uh, in those kind of circumstances should not be missed and uh, we would uh, like all our investors to ensure that uh, whenever there is a request again for this additional contribution that we saw in the previous slide right how they worked out for our existing investors our uh, relationship managers our advisors would uh constantly be in touch with you i'm very sure they have been looking at your portfolio specific portfolios understanding how much cash is required where the opportunities are available and when the opportunity strikes they'll definitely let you know at that point of time it's uh, it's only uh, it, it's something that you would be contributing to your own portfolio because whenever we buy a specific uh, idea whenever we additional whenever we uh, add more funds to your portfolio it's into specific ideas and not across the portfolio because these this is the client level uh, value addition that we try to do so uh, kindly 2024 can be a year which can give you those kind of opportunities so let's be ready with that kind of additional contribution also and uh, so with that uh, i would uh, want to go into how this team works right like i said it's more about uh, how the process has been developed and how it has been executed and all this wouldn't be possible without the entire team mr sham who's at the top his philosophy has been institutionalized today into different uh, fund managers mr balaji mr rohit rajat and ranjan who take care of the fund management uh, part and we have our research team a very robust research and strategy team with cas and cfas and uh, we have our investment management and product management as well so it's a team which uh, gives you it's so it's not just a uh, Uh, an idea that comes up and then it uh, falls into your portfolio it's a team that works on a every specific idea and only after working on that specific idea also the execution takes a good amount of time a good amount of vigil that is required from each one of us before that stock ends up in your portfolio so a big uh, uh, congrats to the entire team as well for reaching this uh, milestone uh, and uh, there's still a long way to go for us and of course uh, fund managers profile as you would all know mr sham Uh, his profile his uh, decades of experience investing experience in two different businesses has culminated into our investment philosophy and that is flowing down to the firm and uh, that's what has been institutionalized today some key terms of uh, the portfolio of solitaire uh, it's a 50 lakh investment which is as per sebi regulation which is minimum and uh, there's an exit load for 3 years 
and there's a fixed fee it's a fixed fee product which is a no nonsense product right you uh, it's on the average uh, portfolio value computed on a daily average basis so other terms for your uh, view just a standard disclaimer so all this is purely educational in nature and if it had given any specific if it had intended to uh, or show that it is uh, into specific stocks or specific financial advice it doesn't intend to do it so oh, let's go for the question and answer round where you can type in your questions in the chat box and i'll be happy to answer them thank you okay i think uh, there are a few questions already uh first okay congratulations i thought for achieving 1000 crores are staying as thank you sir thank you so much out of uh, curiosity how many ideas tend to get rejected by the fund manager a question from mr anand uh there's a good question sir so the thing is uh, so let's say uh, the fund manager there's a specific industry that a research analyst is looking at right an industry would have multiple companies so an industry uh, like let's say pharmaceuticals right let's say the indus the analyst goes through various research reports various annual reports and comes up with five to six or six to seven companies in that respective industry after filtering out from a zone perspective six to uh, a few more uh, companies so let's say totally 10 to 12 are there the uh, analyst goes ahead with six to seven he presents six to seven or rather he uh, discusses with the head of research about six to seven the head of research then goes ahead and picks two or three out of that come or two or three out of the six to seven and uh, the two and three uh, the two to three companies that uh, have come into that pipe right the final pipe are discussed by the fund manager and the head of research and finally a uh, stock uh, one or two stocks is what ends up in your portfolio so let's say out of this 10 to 12 stocks in the industry there's hardly one to two make it to your portfolio because that is the kind of filtration that goes ahead with multiple layers right a uh, research analyst can has his own judgment which can be accepted or like uh, probed by a head of research and the head of research and the fund manager can further discuss and then bring it down to one or two so that's the kind of uh, so to give you a brief idea of how it works this may not be the exact case with multiple companies but this is pretty much where we work around so it's not going to be choosing one company and then investing it or putting it into your investment universe directly so it's a, there's a clear filtration process before it gets into your portfolio hope that answered your questions <laughs> a similar question from mr kv ramani uh, what percentage of stocks screen gets selected for buying and how much time not st stock specific but average in days it takes for completing the purchase if the stock after taking the decision to buy again a good question uh, so i don't have the number in hand right now but let's say if you take last year it was close to 500 to 560 companies that the entire uh, team had uh, screened and understood so may, it may not that, uh, it may not be the case where uh, they have gone through so let's say out of this 560 companies probably 100 and 120 companies would have come to a uh, case where the, uh, the research would have been intense but then the screening part would definitely off the top of my head the number that i have in my mind for the previous year around 500 to 560 so there's a lot of work that goes behind in elimination and then uh getting the respective stock into your portfolio which is what is more important right it's not because it's uh, you will be extremely lucky if you find the right stock in the first instance so you will have to be uh following an elimination strategy where you have a set of 5000 to 7000 listed companies at your disposal so you need to see what to eliminate first that elimination process takes a good amount of time and once you eliminate the weeds out of the entire uh, watch list right what you end up is a set of good ideas which need to be uh, better or rather need to be expected or rather we need to expect them to become better tomorrow and buy them at the right valuation so it is a huge process so if you want just a number of the number of stocks which was screened in the last year it was close to 500 to 560 hope that uh, answered your question sir question from mr ram uh, what is the expense ratio to manage solitaire portfolio sir so if uh, 
I'll just go back to the fee terms so that it'll be clear for you. It's 1.5% on the uh, AUM computed on a daily average portfolio value charged on a quarterly basis. So this 1.5% is per annum. So one fourth of 1.5% on the 90 day average of your portfolio will be charged as a fixed fee and deducted from the cash balance of your portfolio on a quarterly basis. So on top of this, you will have other expenses which are at actuals, which will be similar to what you would incur if you run uh, a portfolio yourself, which is your brokerage and your uh, DMAT charges, et cetera, et cetera. That will be completely on actuals. So all the returns uh, that you see on the performance slide is all net of all fees and all charges. So the net returns that you get as an investor is what you can see on the screen in our performance slides. Hope that answered your question, sir. Question from Ms. Chitra Jayakumar. If someone is interested to give additional amount, uh, can Solitaire take it now? Yes, ma'am, definitely. The thing is, uh, uh, you can speak to your uh, advisor who is uh, assigned to you, and the advisor would, uh, on a client level basis, they would have access to uh, your cash levels and the expectation from the fund management team on how much cash can be invested today. And uh, you can, once the requirement is set, then they will give you a call and ask you for more money. If there is a requirement, if you have additional cash right now, you can definitely speak to them and see if the uh, cash levels are low at that point of time and uh, accordingly add it to your solitaire portfolio. Hope so that answers your question. What is your target return? Uh, so we don't have specific target returns, but then Again, like we put uh, in our one of, uh, and as per regulations, we are not supposed to have any target returns or give any number outside. But the expectation is to do something somewhere around 700 to 900 basis points over and above the average inflation rate. So somewhere close to 14 to 15% net of fees and charges is what we expect. But again, as you can see, we've outperformed, but uh, our expectations, uh, we believe that when we keep our expectations decent, we do not need to take a lot of, uh, we, we tend to make, uh, we do not tend to make a lot of mistakes, right? When you do not tend to make a lot of mistakes, you end up with winners. That's our simple philosophy. Hope that answers your questions. Now that, uh, question from Mr. Narendra Kumar, now that you are 1,000 crores, is there a fee reduction uh, coming for existing investors? Uh, no, sir, as of now, there is nothing of uh, that sort, which is, uh, uh, coming up, but uh, I mean, if the management uh, does so, it will be communicated properly. But uh, as of now, there is no intention of doing a uh, fee reduction for our existing investors. Hope that answers your question, sir. Question from Mr. Jawahar, is there some idea which was bought during inception of Solitaire and still part of the portfolio? Yes, sir, yes. So if you saw the second quadrant uh, that we showed in the slide, right, if you uh, if I can go back to that slide so that uh, can. The second quadrant, this industrial consumables company, which patience is rewarded, we're still holding on to that uh, specific stock. We bought it close to our inception around August, uh, September uh, 2019. We bought it and we still hold on to that company in our portfolio. So that answers your question, sir. Question from uh, Ms. Umama Aishwari are, uh, do we have fintech stocks in uh, Solitaire portfolio? Ma'am, uh, so stock level uh, uh, discussions can be taken outside with your specific relationship manager or specific advisor so that they'll be able to give you a clear answer. We usually refrain from uh, discussing stock level, uh, I mean, keeping stock level discussions in a public forum. Hope you understand, ma'am. Thank you. Question from Mr. Srinivas. Uh, congrats for the great achievement and very happy client for the past 16 glorious months. That's Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to hear that. I had a walk, the talk experience. Yes, that's uh, that's our point. That's uh, what we tend to do. And that's what we expect uh, from the management that we invest uh, your money into as well. So, wonderful. When will the client dashboard like app will be launched? Uh, so, uh, so as of now, we're not taking a call on that front. So if there is something on that front, it will be definitely updated uh, to you directly by your uh, relationship manager or advisor. Thank you. 
question from Mr. Prashant S. Uh, congrats on reaching the milestone. From one of the slides, I could see that an investor entering today would have only 21% of the funds invested. Would the 1.5% fee on the AM include the 79% of the cash component as well? Also, what are the other fee components like? Will be helpful if you can share an estimate. Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Mr. Prashant. So the thing is, uh, so let's say when you say 21% is only being invested, 79% is not being used or it is idle. Uh, that's where we differ uh, from the way we look at it because the 79 percent is not idle money it's more of a dry powder strategy right so it's like we still are working on uh, there are still a lot of ideas that we are still working on which is what is important or which is why the 1.5 fee percent fee is charged so it will include this the entire 100 percent uh would be or others 1.5 percent will uh be applied on the entire 100 percent of the portfolio which is including the cash component as well because this 79 percent is the dry powder that we would want to use in your portfolio when the opportunities come so the uh, ideas are ready the robust uh i mean the pipeline is very robust but valuations are not our function right valuations are a function of the market and typically when we have seen in the past holding on to cash during these times when the ideas are not there uh, for the taking, right? It has worked out very well because you will not, you will see your uh, money being invested uh, in a very aggressive phase when the market goes through a period of correction. Because at that point of time, we would be asking you for more money once the existing cash is extinguished. So for us to wait and execute our, uh, our specific ideas at that point of time, we need this amount of 79%. This 79%, like I am saying once again, it's not idle money. It's your dry powder, which is a strategic move, which is from the client's perspective. Because there is no point in investing 100% today and then losing your money uh, notionally for a period of time and then waiting for it to come back uh, to a uh, fair or a uh, higher valuation, right? So the point is, we know that a lot of stocks or the stocks that even we want to buy are overvalued today. Then why would we go and invest? So the reason why we stop ourselves from investing or strictly stop ourselves from investing is purely from the client's perspective because we do not want to get their entry valuations. And uh, the other fee components are, uh, there's no other fee component. This 1.5% is the only fee component that you would see in Solitaire. If you look at other charges, if you mean the other charges, it would be... Uh, the brokerage, uh, which is close to 1.1% uh, with our uh, broker partners and other charges, everything put together on an average would come to around 0.25%, 0.3% of your portfolio. And if you look at the GST component on the fee part, it would be 18% of 1.5%, which will total up to 1.77%. This 0.27 is the 18% of 1.5%. So your total fee would be 1.77%, including GST, plus other charges which will come somewhere between 0.25 to 0.3 percent so overall your cost will be between 2.1 to 2.15 percent and i would like to reiterate that the performance that you see uh, in the performance slide in every performance slide that we let out is of uh, is all after all fees and charges that includes other charges like dmat uh, gsc everything so the net returns that you get as investors into the fund is what is being shown in the performance slide Hope you uh, got an answer to the, your question, Mr. Prashant. Thank you. Question from Mr. Prasad. If we miss this or other presentation of your products, or, uh, is these recordings available in your website so that we get a better idea? Yes, sir, definitely. So as we speak, our, uh, this uh, presentation is recorded or rather is going live on uh, YouTube as well. So if you reach out to us uh, with, uh, I mean, through uh, an email or uh, your phone, you will uh, share the specific slide or the specific uh, uh, YouTube link where you can go and access this presentation at any point of time you want. So every other presentation of ours, except for uh, client specific presentations, right, which is uh, private to clients only, which will involve stocks, stock level discussions if required, right? At that point of time, uh, I mean, those presentations will not be made public. It will be privately held only. But then if you look at these uh, uh, presentations, which are open to the public, it will be uploaded on YouTube as well. So you can go and view them whenever you're free. Hope that uh, answers your question, sir. Question from Mr. Arun. Do you provide portfolio disclosure to the investors monthly along with reason for buy and sell decisions made to the clients? Uh, Mr. Arun, we don't provide a reason to, uh, for buy or sell decisions because 
uh, as it suggests, it's a discretionary portfolio where we uh, take the buy and sell call at uh, the portfolio manager's discretion. Uh, so the disclosure, uh, portfolio disclosure is done every month where your holding statement, your performance statement, your transaction statement, bank book, everything, uh, comprehensive statement is shared with you on a monthly basis to your registered email ID. But then the reasons for the buy and sell decisions uh, are not typically made uh, on the uh, reports. However, we have an investor letter that goes out every quarter to all our investors, which specifies what, how we uh, our outlook on uh, the current portfolios and how our outlook on the market uh, for the next uh, year or how we are seeing uh, the risk and all that. So that newsletter will yeah. give you a good amount of uh, understanding on our philosophy, but uh, we refrain from taking uh, stock level or uh, decision level uh, uh, disclosure or providing a reason for a specific decision is something that we do not uh, provide with our uh, disclosure. Hope that answers your question, sir. Question from Mr. Strini. I would like to start the solitaire yeah. payments, but I'm not fond of the current valuations. Of course, there are pockets of value in some places. How much would you deploy at the moment? I'm not in a hurry. I can wait for valuations yeah. to become more attractive. How long does it typically take to deploy the full amount, sir? Uh, definitely, sir. Uh, let me just go back to, to that slide which tells you how much we deploy today. Uh, it's 21% that we deploy today. And this 79% is held into cash and liquid funds to take advantage of an opportunity when it comes to us. So when we say take advantage of an opportunity when it comes to us, we need to be ready with the dry powder, which is why we say when investors come to us and tell us, uh, you know, sometimes uh, let me just wait until uh, you guys start investing more and then I'll invest. We tell them, no, that strategy will not uh, work properly because we need to be in, we need to be ready with the funds because our vigil is between 9.15 to 3.30 in the markets, right? So let's say 9.15, we don't get an opportunity. Let's say after one o'clock or 1.30, two o'clock, we get an opportunity. At that point of time, we need to be ready with the investors' funds to take advantage of it. And you can see in today's market, you don't get that opportunity to deploy money over a period of uh, days or weeks, it just goes off in a matter of minutes, right? When you have such a market which doesn't give you a lot of opportunities, you need to take every opportunity that you get and you need to be ready to take every opportunity that you get. So when we have this 79% cash, it is more of a dry powder strategy that we uh, want to uh, use to deploy your money rather than keeping it. It's not like we are keeping your money idle, which is what we are trying to say. So even if you want to start today, we are saying we will start today, but the thing is we will have to be ready with the funds at our disposal to invest in your behalf when the opportunity comes. Because the timing that the markets give us today is very, very short. Because before you know it, the valuations are again back to a level which has overvalued and you have missed your opportunity in buying a specific stock for a specific client. That is the reason, sir. And how long it uh, typically takes for uh, you to deploy the full amount is... Uh, it depends, definitely. The reason why we are not, it can take anywhere between one to two quarters, but let's say a uh, quick correction happens where the requirement is that you need to deploy a lot of your money at uh, very quickly, right? It can even get extinguished one month or two months, right? It depends. That's how dynamic the process is for us because uh, it is not phased out and it is on a client level that we invest your funds. So, so today, uh, a client who had onboarded with us, um, 12 months back could have 5% or 10% of cash, but that gets extinguished within a few days, right? Once the opportunities come. But then if the opportunity size is so big that we can deploy 100% or 95% of your money in a few days, then we will take it. So we won't wait for the one quarter or two quarters to complete so that we phase it out because valuations are a function of yes or no. So it's binary, the decision, right? Whether we buy or not is going to be binary. And with certain decisions, we can take a call to buy it in a phased basis. But the valuations, let's say, is going to be very attractive. Then our decisions have to be very binary in nature. Hope that uh, answers your question, sir. Question from Mr. Uh, Ram. Uh, you're a good presenter. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, question from Mr. Prabhu. Do we, as an investor, need to file the ITR? for the trades executed within the portfolio. Uh, with respect to ITR filing, yes, sir, you'll have to take care of it uh, with uh, at your end uh, using your child accountant. So what we would be able to help you with is the 
timely uh, reporting of uh, your statement i mean timely reporting of your uh, transactions through statements uh, where your monthly statements will be delivered to your registered email id other than that you'll have your advance tax statements uh, which will be sent to you around 6 to 7 days before the uh, advance tax uh, due date and you'll also have your quarterly statements uh, at the end of the quarter you'll get your uh, yearly statements uh, audited statements as well so we will be equipping you with all this uh, relevant information at the right time so that you can share these with your auditor to get the itr uh, filed for your uh, account so that answers your question sir question from uh, mr dilip uh, do you own, do you share research on addition and exits okay research notes on exit and entry uh, no sir so research notes would be proprietary in nature and uh, we are not supposed to share it uh, or rather the research report is uh, very proprietary to the research team only right they cannot share it outside of the research team itself and not with, to anyone in the organization itself so that is what is supposed to, so these research notes are not shared outside uh, in public but uh what we tend to do is like i had uh, answered for a previous question we have these quarterly newsletters that we send out to all our clients where we mention that uh, we have an allocation this theme or this sector and we could speak about a specific uh, theme that we are looking at and the risk that we are taking with that and the four risk that we foresee with a specific uh, uh, idea that we uh, have in our portfolio so those kind of things you will be getting in the newsletter but then uh, research notes which are proprietary will not be shared sir. Hope that answers your question. Question from Mr. Sampath Kumar. So we sold one two-wheeler script now. Now it has run up a lot. Uh, please add up something on it. Why we sold? Okay, that's a good question, sir. So uh, you would know the stock definitely, which was the part of that fourth quarter that we spoke about. See, the price had uh, run up at that point of time also, and after that, yes, like you rightly said, it has gone up again. But the thing is, uh, why we have sold is. see it didn't, it didn't come as a consequence of our thesis or rather the uh, let's say we put out a thesis and the uh, actual uh, thing happens the thesis plays out right then we don't have any problem in holding on to a specific stock but then let's say your stock the stock that has a thesis that this will go this way this will go that way if it doesn't work out or rather there is a continuous evidence that this may not work out in the future then it is from the investors interest that we sell out from a specific idea right so let's say after we sold it the stock had come down then we would be so it, it is not a case where okay the stock is going to come down that's when we should sell a stock because we will never know right but what we will know is that we have thought of uh, one specific thesis for a company and the management or the company doesn't go or doesn't agree to that thesis continuously and time and again what happened with that specific company is that our thesis kept getting defeated because the company's intentions were questionable at that point of time and they are still questionable the reason why it has gone up could be many it could be because of liquidity it could be because a specific set of investors are uh, confident about that specific stock but then why we refrain from investing or staying invested in those companies is that things can take a u turn at any point of time right so even if we lose uh, money or rather even if we uh, tend to uh, lose out on an opportunity by selling out early we do not uh, uh, lose any sleep over it because we ensured that we did the right thing from the client's perspective because you will never be able to buy at the low and sell at the top but the thing is what you can do is what is controllable from your end your thing what is controllable from your end is ensuring that the company does right by your thesis and does right by all its investors as far as we were concerned they were doing some things which were not right by its investors and they were saying one thing and doing another thing so those kind of companies are always going to be a uh, flight risk and there could be many reasons why the stock price go, uh, go, goes up after that as well but that's not in our control right our control is where we want our clients funds to be invested in so hope that answered your question sir question from mr uh, krishnan aks so do asset man asset under management uh, gives you strength to back up your idea or decision means money power with fund manager can back up his decision that is my question that may work in mid cap type of stock or less volume traded stocks uh asset under management gives you the uh, strength to back up your right means money with fund manager okay 
so the thing is uh, in this case uh, it is going to be client level investment only sir so the thing is uh, i'm not sure if i understand your question right but i am giving you an answer please let me know if uh, this is uh, sufficient um so the thing is uh, if uh, a specific stock with a low liquidity a small cap or a mid cap right uh, because of our high aum you mean to say that if we lay, let's say want to invest 5% of our fund which let's say today comes to around 50 crores right can we influence the prices if the question is that uh, i would want to tell you that uh, we are very very specific on where we invest your funds so today we have a good hold of where the aum is where how we can sustainably create value and uh, today when we look at a small cap stock also in solid air we look at stocks which are upwards of 3000 or 4000 crores or 5000 crores because the notion that uh, 3000 or 5000 crores or 4000 crores or 5000 crores stocks cannot make money has been defied in the markets time and again people have made money in large cap stocks also which are running into lakhs and crores of market cap right so even we are very very cognizant of the fact that our asset size has become big and we need to be investing we cannot be investing in smaller names relatively smaller names within the market to ensure there is enough liquidity to our investors when they want to take an exit so if uh, the question is that we have enough money to invest or influence the price of a specific stock we do not do that and we uh, because our fiduciary responsibility is toward our towards our investors and uh, we are very very careful with where we deploy uh the clients funds paying he- we pay a lot of heed to our existing aum and see that we are come to a good level so we need to be cognizant of the fact that our uh, decisions are going to uh impact a lot of uh, investors uh, portfolio so we take our decisions with that fiduciary responsibility only so hope that answers your question sir if i've understood your question right and if i've given you the answer that you needed uh please let me know or if not you can just let me know as well so i can give you a revised answer if it's required question from mr prasad uh, how many investors or clients are there in solitaire product and how many clients for all the pms services sir uh, sir we currently have close to 700 investors in solitaire and overall as a firm we have close to 1200 uh, investors in our pms across different pms schemes hope that answers your question sir a uh, question from mr jawahar quarterly newsletter on the market outlook and pms performance uh, should be helpful yes sir, you will get that uh, if you are a client you will definitely get that into your registered email id on a quarterly basis uh, on a general market outlook and the pms we wouldn't focus much on the performance the performance anyway you would be seeing it on your uh, performance report that is delivered to your uh, mail id in terms of performance reports every month right uh, with respect to outlook and the risk that we foresee uh, doc and the specific ideas that we have taken up and how we uh, intend to take your solitaire portfolio forward will be there on the quarterly newsletter hope that answers your question a uh, question from mr kv ramani uh, by dry powder it means that the cash is invested in some liquid funds yes sir so it's going to be a combination of cash which is ready for immediate investment and some liquid funds as well so it's going to be a combination of these two which is going to be at our disposal to uh, at our disposal to use whenever the opportunity comes towards investing into your portfolio so let's say today you come like i said at around 79% that will be between uh, liquid funds and cash so that the cash can be used today uh, after 9:15 or after 12:30 let's say an opportunity comes i can use that cash immediately and capture an opportunity which comes later during the day as well but the liquid funds let's say we want, we believe that we can take a week or two to some uh, opportunity to come that li- liquid funds will be yielding the normal savings bank interest rate that you would get so that it is not kept idle other than that we have some cash which is used for immediate uh, deployment when the, whenever the opportunity comes Hope that answers your question, sir. Question from Mr. Prasad: Can clients decide to sell to get some cash? Uh, no, sir. This would be a completely discretionary uh, portfolio, so you won't be able to decide to sell uh, a specific idea. But you will be, uh, you, if you can request. Uh, so let's say you start with 50 lakhs, and tomorrow, uh, over a period of three, four years, let's say it goes up to 75 or 80 lakhs, right? Assuming uh, at that point of time, you can decide to withdraw some money. 
to the extent of uh, uh, the excess over 50 lakhs that is let's say your portfolio 70 lakhs you can withdraw up to a maximum of 20 lakhs for you to uh, stay invested because the pms requires that a minimum of 50 lakhs to be maintained as per sebi regulations so you can't start with 50 and go up to 70 and then withdraw 30 because that will uh, declare the agreement void and null so you'll have to ensure that 50 lakhs is maintained as well hope that uh, answers your question sir question from uh, mr janardhanan natarajan what is the maximum percentage allocation to a single stock uh, as of now uh, we have allocated uh, a maximum of uh, 5 to 5.2% uh, in a specific stock sir so that is at cost right uh, for us to we can go up to 7% as well but then for us to go up to 7% in a specific stock uh, it's going to be uh, uh, it's going to it needs to be a very high conviction stock and it needs to be at a valuation that is very very favorable only then we'll go up to 7% but uh, as far as we are concerned we have gone up to only 5.2 to 5.3 in a specific stock at cost till now that's been our maximum allocation because what you see with solitaire is a risk adjusted portfolio which will give you a good balance to compound your wealth uh, sustainably over a period of time hope that answers your question sir question from mr srini should we have to pay the fee amount separately or would you guys take the fee directly from your portfolio yes sir we will take the fee directly from your portfolio depending so we will have uh, a specific uh, cash balance left in your portfolio right so we will adjust your portfolio accordingly and the cash balances accordingly to ensure that a portfolio our portfolio fees is deducted directly from the portfolio instead of you adding more or rather you paying the fee separately so it is directly taken from the portfolio by ensuring there is enough cash levels or uh, there is another point that solter also stresses upon is that uh, its average dividend yield right over a period of uh, the last 3 4 years has been somewhere close to 1.53% which is almost uh, close to or rather which is close to its uh, fee uh, its yearly fee of 1.5% so we have a good sense of how many how much dividends are going to come into your portfolio at one what point of time so uh, the process takes into account of all that and then ensures there is enough cash in your portfolio before it deducts this quarterly uh, fee which is 1.5% which is per annum and quarterly is 1/4 of 1.5% of the 90 day average portfolio value is taken from your portfolio directly so that answers your question sir what is the approximate churn rate in the portfolio we've always maintained a very very low churn rate in the portfolio like i said solitaire is one of the most boring portfolios that you can see and it's uh, been less than 20% and on average it's been 20 21% max for you question from mr arun what is the typical age profile this solita pms is recommended for is this pms advised if i were to invest for my retirement which is say 20 years away so it's a very good question sir which is why we started off our presentation when we said uh, solita is a invest a solita is a product which can address a wide set of investors requirements uh, Uh, completely right for an investor who's maybe let's say even starting out in his career and has some 50 lakhs which is uh, uh, which he saved up uh, through his inheritance and all that can start off with solita and then save monthly it can work for those kind of investors it can work for investors who are going towards their retirement it can work for investors who are aggressive also so this is something that is all in campus right you can go for a solita pms even if if you have let's say 20 years away what we uh, constantly tell our investors who want to create the retirement corpus is that start off and then add a monthly contribution as well because your monthly contribution is going to make a lot of difference to your overall uh, returns and the portfolio value that you accumulate over a period of time because it is going to bring in behavior plus it is going to give us fund managers the enough uh, ammunition whenever we want to take advantage of a portfolio i mean take advantage of a specific uh, happening in the market whenever the portfolio has cash so let's say you start with 50 lakhs and then add a lakh or two uh, on a monthly basis depending on your liquidity position right what we will be able to do is uh, we whenever the cash comes and hits the account what happens is if the opportunity is there for us then we take it into and deploy that money into set of one or two stocks where Uh, the relative valuation is much more favorable than the rest so if not we keep accumulating that stock uh, that money and then when the opportunity comes we then deploy it together so this will ensure that your behavior is also behavior is also uh, 
in uh, good behavior good investment behavior is also induced in you plus there is a good amount of money at the investment managers disposal for you to for us to invest in opportunities when they come to us so at that point of time when the opportunity comes we it may take time for you to re, uh, get the funds ready and then send. instead of that you can create a monthly contribution kind of a thing where the money hits the account on a monthly where the money hits this uh, uh, solitaire account on a monthly basis where we will be able to use it when the opportunity is come hope that answers your question sir yeah but i ask in general with overall uh, fund manager sorry sir uh, is that a follow up to your previous question sir let me just go back to previous question okay so for that uh, i said that okay gives you a strength to back up your idea or decision okay this uh, in general with the overall fund managers uh, so the thing is the scheme is uh, separate or rather independent of the fund managers that is what to say is uh, the schemes uh, attributes right are a, uh, are a culmination of different uh, processes put together right it's the fund manager who decides the stock and decides along with the team the allocation and in the end the execution is done by the operations team and the deployment team which ends up as your portfolio right so if the overall fund managers uh, uh, i'm not sure if the fund managers uh, strength or buying strength uh, if you could rephrase your question it will be great sir you don't mind so that i don't miss uh, communicate question from mr arun what if we start with 50 lakhs and due to market scenario the value has reduced to 40 lakhs does it count valid for a 50 lakh value to maintain at all times so in case of these cases you wouldn't be asked to add 10 lakhs sir it's only your cost or market value whichever is higher right if we start with 50 lakhs let's say it goes to 40 lakhs 45 lakhs 48 lakhs whatever you wouldn't be asked to give you uh, you wouldn't be asked to give uh, the portfolio the excess amount uh, which is notionally lost right so at that point of time it doesn't matter but let's say you start with 50 and it goes to 70 uh, you want to withdraw more than 20 that wouldn't be possible hope that answers your question question from mr prasad is it possible two friends or two family members open joint solitaire account with 50 lakhs as each and invest 50 lakh each okay you mean to say 50, 25 lakhs as each sir so hope my understanding is correct if that is the case uh, with two close family members like uh, spouse uh, or uh, you know uh, let's say uh, mother uh, i mean mother and son or father and son father or daughter that will be possible but then two friends will not be possible sir we ideally do not accept uh, two friends coming with a joint account it will be more with a close family related that we accept that as as your question sir <clears throat> oh uh, sorry uh, question from mr uh, shakti if we cross more than 1 crore uh, can we split to another pms and i thought what is your opinion yes sir that is definitely possible technically there is no uh, there is nothing that will stop you from doing it but you would always say let's say you stick to an uh, uh, let's say you start with 50 lakhs in a specific idea and you understand the product and you uh, that product gives you what you require then you go travel along with that product for a good amount of time and then later if also if you are interested in another product address it separately because usually what happens is uh, when we interrupt compounding right by pulling money out or rather booking capital gains it usually doesn't end up in a very fruitful way or rather it doesn't very uh, give you the exact experience that you will get if you let compounding run by itself but it is definitely possible not a problem Hope that answers your question, sir. Question from Mr. Sridivas: Is there a PMS switch between the different PMS schemes provided? We have 50 lakhs uh, mandatory requirement. Uh, different PMS schemes provided. We have 50 lakh. Okay. PMS switch uh, will not be possible directly, sir. That is, uh, so let's say you have 50 lakhs, you invest in Solitaire today, uh, and you want to switch to uh, another scheme of ours. At that point of time, you will have to. terminate the existing agreement get the proceeds back and then move on to the move on to creating an other, other agreement with another scheme and then start over there so these schemes are independent right they run independently with independent uh, requirements of different investors so say solitaire has a specific uh, uh, investors uh, requirement to address with the sphere true blue will have different investors interest to uh, address so they are run separately operationally as well 
in separate accounts. So if you want to switch between PMS, one PMS to another, you'll have to execute uh, or rather terminate one and then get the proceeds and then execute it. Hope that answers your question, sir. Question, okay. Mr. Arun, very much appreciate your clear and detailed presentation with answers. Glad to have attended. Thank you so much, sir. Glad that you uh, found it helpful. Uh, please attend all our other webinars also because on a weekly basis, we do a lot of webinars which our uh, investors find really helpful uh, in terms of decision making, right? So the thing is, even our existing investors uh, need to keep getting the validation that they've invested in the right product. So for that, we hold a lot of webinars on a weekly basis. Please attend uh, uh, whenever you're free and uh, will not be disappointed. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Muthu, thanks for crispy explanation and presentation. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your comments. Thank you. Question from uh, Mr. Arun. When we are getting closer to retirement, will it be possible to modify the PMS as per uh, client's reduced risk level and will monthly SWP be allowed? So maybe closer, uh, closer to retirement, sir. So the thing is, modify the PMS according to the reduced risk cannot be done directly. But then, uh, let's say, you want to reduce your risk by moving into another scheme of ours, let's say True Blue or Sphere, which are relatively uh, moderate risk taking approaches when compared to Solitaire, which is 100% equity exposure, uh, give, which gives you 100% equity exposure. At that point of time, the same uh, process will apply. You'll have to uh, close this account, uh, get all the proceeds, and then move the uh, proceeds to another PMS scheme by executing a different agreement. So at that point of time, SWP, uh, as long as the SWP doesn't uh, go, uh, let the portfolio below the minimum investment level of 50 lakhs, it will be allowed. Sir. But beyond that, as per SEBI regulations, we would not be able to go below 50 lakhs. So at that point of time, what we suggest is, uh, once you create this retirement corpus that you would want to accumulate uh, uh, and use uh, post-retirement, uh, we have our sister concern, which, comes, which uh, deals with mutual funds uh, and it distributes mutual funds as well, where we have helped a lot of investors uh, uh, do an SWP through a specific mutual fund at that point of time. So usually that is the route. You create your corpus using uh, an equity instrument like PMS and then move to a, uh, a hybrid instrument or a low risk instrument through a mutual fund, which will give you a, a an SWP option. We will be able to help you on that front as well, sir. Hope that answers your question, sir. Uh, from Mr. Prabhu, great presentation. Kudos to you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. From Mr. Prasad, very much impressed with the explanation and your patience level for all the simple questions and tough questions. <laughs> Not at all, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your uh, time and thank you so much for your questions and your comments as well. Question uh, section given more clarity about the PMS. Thank you for your clarification. Thank you for all members who asked such great, great questions. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Vijay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Question from Mr. K.V. Ramani, uh, do you have U.S. stocks in Solitaire? Uh, no, sir. So as far as uh, PMS is in India are concerned, uh, we are not allowed to buy U.S. stocks into a PMS portfolio. That is the first thing. And uh, it's all going to be Indian listed equity only across uh, different PMS. So we have a product called Sphere, which uh, invests into ETS. Right, which invests into multiple mutual funds also, which have an exposure into, which may or may not have an exposure to US stocks. So if you're looking to, uh, looking for an experience that uh, you won't want some exposure to global stocks or US stocks, you can check out that product, sir. We'll be able to help you out. Question from Mr. R. Srinivasan, how much time we need to give before uh, redeeming some amount for personal reasons? Uh, there's no specific time, so you can just let us know whenever it is required because it is important that uh, you get your money whenever you need it, right? So it's just going to be a simple mail that you need to draft to us. Whenever you need the money, you can just draft a mail to us saying, I need this much amount of money and we will redeem that uh, amount and then give it to you as soon as possible. Within the next uh, three to five working days, you will get the credit. So you don't actually need to give us money uh, time for that. We would need to uh, we would need the time only to for the operational uh, aspect of it. That is, once you ask yeah. us to redeem, let's say, ten percent, right? Just for example, at that point of time, we will need uh, that day to execute the transaction and t plus one day to for the cash to come to the existing uh, bank account uh, pool account, and from there it needs to be transferred yeah. to your bank account. So on 
uh, on a high level you can keep 3 to 5 working days as the time you will get your uh, cash after you request the same from us hope that answers your question sir any plans of introducing new your uh, pms strategies in your future so as far as uh, as far as we know not any time now probably because our existing universe itself is all encompassing as in we've covered a good amount of uh, uh, requirements for a multiple set of investors so we feel uh, this would suffice but definitely if we are going towards uh, something of that sort we would uh, definitely let all our investors know at once so you will get to know about it if we do something of that sort so hope that uh, answers your question question from mr prasad uh, 50 lakhs can be divided between uh, two pms uh, uh, actually we have not uh, kept it that way so so for each scheme you would need a uh, 50 lakhs and we have kept it that way for a reason as well because uh, each uh, scheme is very distinct uh, from one another so, so let's say you go with solitaire you get a very distinct experience and if you go with vriddhi you get a very distinct experience and sphere and true blue have a very distinct experience so uh, what happens when you dilute this with uh, two different pm i mean what happens when you put two together two pmss is that the experience gets diluted right so let's say you want a well balanced portfolio you go for solitaire let's say you want only small caps you go for vriddhi let's say you want multi asset you go for sphere let's say i want only large cap you go for true blue so even in solitaire we buy small caps so you want to buy small caps you buy in solitaire also we buy there right large caps we buy in solitaire mid caps we buy in solitaire so we say why go for different schemes when each scheme is very very distinct from each other where you have to uh, experience that specific schemes uh, uh, nature by uh, i mean independently instead of dealing it with multiple uh, schemes that is the reason we've kept it uh, specific right one scheme would require 50 lakhs to answer your question there's a question from uh, mr shreeni from youtube wanted to understand the rationale behind cash holding and the remaining money deployment uh, process so cash holding is uh, as we had discussed uh, sir the cash holding is a dry powder strategy uh, it's more of uh, holding on to the resources the, or the ammunition whenever the opportunity comes to us and which is when we will deploy that money this is all from a client's perspective right it's not uh, the ideas are there right the ideas are always there the robust uh, pipeline of ideas is very very robust and whenever the idea becomes uh, favorable in terms of valuations we will deploy it uh, by taking advantage of the short term uh, uh, volatility at that point of time that is the rational behind keeping this much of cash and this 21% of deployment also is not random it is into specific uh, 10 to 12 stocks in solitaire currently which still have a good amount of uh, Uh, or other which still are favorable in terms of valuations right so it's not uh, 30 stocks uh, across the, so let's say your portfolio will uh, go, is going to be built over a period of uh, time into 30 stocks we don't buy all that 30 stocks at 20% of their intended allocation it's only a specific set of stocks which is 10 stocks today which are available at favorable valuations today which will comprise of this 21% there there can be other stocks which can still be part of your portfolio tomorrow which we still Uh, have in our pipeline but the price is not right so when the price becomes right that will become part of your portfolio that is the uh, uh, rational behind cash holding and the remaining money deployment process like i had explained it's going to be very very dynamic it's not going to be uh, specific that within 3 months or within 2 quarters we will complete it because markets can give you opportunities at any point of time you need a product that is as dynamic as the market moves right you need to be your product needs to understand a market dynamics and then invest accordingly that's what uh, you get with solid hope that answers your question sir question from mr uh, jawahar do you conduct annual investor meets yes sir. so every year we do have so for every so let's say solitaire four years of solitaire is something that we conducted last year after we completed four years in 2023 august uh, we did it somewhere between uh, 10th to 15th of september i don't remember the date exactly but that's when you will be uh, looking at uh, this time also around the same time we will be doing our five years of solitaire presentation where uh, we will have one presentation for clients specific and one presentation for uh, all prospects who are interested in solitaire as well it will be a public event so we will definitely do do that uh, this time also sir
for that transfer equation and this will be the case for other products as well like vridhi or sphere or true blue you will have our your uh, yearly investor meets which is exclusive to clients hope that answers your question if uh, there are any other questions you can type them out in the chat box you see the chat box button is close to the timer on the left on top you can click that and your chat box will open you can type in your questions and i'll be happy to answer them uh mr kv ramani thanks for the patient hearing and answering to all our questions so thank you so much sir thank you so much for attending our webinar please uh, keep attending our webinars to Uh, get the confidence that uh, is required from all our investors. So it's because of all our investors that we've gone thousand, we've gotten to thousand crores today, and we expect to go beyond also, and we are uh, working towards it as well. So thank you, thank you so much for that. Thank you. Question from Mr. Prasad: Can we uh, come to your office to have a discussion about the investment in PMS products? Yes, sir. Any anyone is welcome to our office to understand and have a discussion about uh, PMS products. We'll be happy to answer all your queries when you. when we uh, see you in our office at that point of time uh, we, are, we are open anytime so between uh, monday to saturday i mean uh, from monday to saturday between uh, 9 am to 6:30 pm we are open so we can just or you can just schedule a specific meeting with uh, one of our relationship managers as well who can get in touch with you or even come and meet you in your place uh, to have a discussion and we are flexible that way so that answers your question <clears throat> uh gopinath will just wait for a couple of minutes uh, and if there are no questions we'll just uh, close and uh, for uh, anyone who wants to reach out to us uh, uh, you can see you can check out our uh, number and our uh, email id on the screen now our email id is pms@ithought.co.in and our mobile number is 9530027285 you can reach out to us and one of our relationship managers will get in touch with you to take the discussion further for your interest thank you sir thank you hope uh, i've answered all the question thank you so much for being so patient uh, because uh, two and a half hours uh, during a saturday morning is not easy for anyone to uh, you know give away right so we all uh, treasure our saturday mornings with our family and all that so thank you so much uh, for your patience uh, hope uh, this give you a good understanding of what solitaire means and what solitaire 1000 and beyond is going to be as well so thank you so much for your time everyone thank you Thanks. thank you sir thank you thank you sir